I thought I'd bring you my first impressions of a new drop from Parkhurst brand. This is a revival of one of the original models, the Allen boot in Horween's Natural Dublin. Let's see what my first impressions are like. G'day, how are you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of Wajit country on the lands that I live and work. Uh, these are my first impressions of a Parkhurst brand model that I've been after for a very long time. I missed the original iteration of this in their uh, 18 lasted uh, uh, model and I also missed it when they brought it out in a uh, 602 last from the uh, Batavia New York workshop. It's the Allen boot, the Parkhurst plain toe boot, uh, service boot, obviously, uh, six inch shaft from uh, the height to the top of the heel, uh, simple uh, uh, no toe cap vamp, uh, a single piece backstay, and two quarter pieces to go with that. Uh, the uh, heel uh, is, is uh, stacked leather, uh, simple block heel, uh, with a uh, proprietary Parkhurst but day-night-like uh, studded sole. The rubber on the studded sole is, is a little softer than day-night uh, and uh, uh, while still shock absorbent is probably a little bit grippier I think than day-night itself which is a very hard rubber compound. Uh, all uh, darkened antiqued uh, hardware with uh, four Oh, sorry, five eyelets and three speed hooks at the top. Um, a, a very, very sort of simple, plain uh, service boot style that Parkhurst enthusiasts will know about. Um, however, this leather uh, I've been waiting for for a long time is from Horween Tannery in Chicago, and it's their uh, natural Dublin leather. Uh, Dublin is uh, part of a, a family of leathers uh, tanned by Horween. Uh, the Essex is the beginning of it, which is a veg tan based leather. Uh, and then they put in some waxes and it becomes Dublin. And then they polish it and put some more waxes and it becomes another leather, which I can't remember the name of. So it's a family of three leathers, veg tan based with more and more oils and finishing. The Dublin uppers are, are quite a firm leather, um, particularly as they are veg tanned. And it's a little more than two millimeters thick. 2.2, uh, 2.3 millimeters, I think, depending on, on where you measure. Um, uh, so it's really quite sturdy. The uh, shaft is unlined, as you can see, but the vamp is lined with a soft sort of kid leather on the inside. Um, let me read the components to you from the website. Uh, so the construction is Goodyear welted with natural cork and a steel shank. So a steel shank goes in between the heel and the ball of the foot down in there, insert it into the cork layer. So that gives you uh, arch support for that little gap there and it gives you torsional control too across um, uh, irregular terrain. Uh, the upper is full grain natural Dublin leather from Horween. The lining uh, is leather in the vamp or toe box and unlined in the quarters. Uh, the insole is veg tanned Benz leather. The hardware five eyelets, three speed hooks or brass. The laces are round waxed. The welt is a veg tanned leather, uh, and the midsole is a veg tanned leather. The sole and the heel are rubber studded, and the heel stack is veg tanned Benz leather that's excess leather cut from the insole. So, a little bit of saving uh, and conservation in there. It is a uh, split reverse welt, which means that the uh, stitching on the Goodyear welt goes all the way around the boot. And if you look at the sides just there, you can see the flare up against the uppers and that's where the welt, uh, which if you look at it in cross section, is split and then is peeled up halfway and then pushed against the side of the, uh, side of the boot uh, and then stitched down um, uh, along the welt. So Goodyear welting is where the uppers and the insole are attached to the inside of the welt and then the outside of the welt is sewn through the midsole 
and the outsole and you can see the stitching there and that way there are there are two stitches one on the inside of the boot and one on the outside of the boot so that creates water resistance and it also uh, gives you the ability to resole because you can cut the stitches uh, at the at the uh, outsole peel off the outsole leave the welt leave the uppers untouched glue on a new outsole and restitch that that external stitch so in, in terms of size and fit uh, this is parkhurst's newer 602 last uh, it is actually the 602M last. So it's a little bit roomy at the ball of the foot and concurrently at the heel. Uh, I, I, I don't mind that extra bit of room, but it is definitely roomier if you're used to the old Parker 602 last from the New York work, uh, uh, factory. Uh, it's also a bit roomier in terms of height. So that gives me, and I, I like that, a little bit more wiggle room in the toes. And I, I really don't like my toes being squashed. So the Parker 602 last is reasonably anatomical, but also uh, uh, roomy at the ball and rounded, although kind of almond shaped, uh, rounded at the toe so it gives you a little wiggle room. I like that. I'm an eight and a half US uh, in D width on the Brannock device. That's my true size. Uh, in Parkers, I always take a size 8D because you half size down, and this is really a, a perfect fit. The US price is US $418, uh, which is a, about average for Parkhurst boots uh, because of the componentry, I think, and um, I, I think definitely worth it in terms of value. The Essex, I uh, uh, beg your pardon, the Dublin leather um, is veg tan, as I said. And it, it will um, behave differently because depending on which part of the hide that you're cutting from. And you can see from the vamp after a few days wear, there's a tiny little bit extra creasing in the right boot than in the left boot. Let's take a look at that. See that bit of creasing? And I think that bit of creasing might be a bit of loose grain. I definitely have that with my Oak Street Bootmakers uh, Natural Dublin Trench Boots as well. Um, and it is a little bit more wavier. Look, I don't mind that. It's not structurally problematic. It's not going to split and become two pieces of leather. It's not going to flake off. And uh, if you like your patina, <laughs> I, I think that's quite attractive. So um, I think what remains is let me uh, put these on feet so you can see what they're like on feet. Uh, and then we'll give you a little summary. Putting on boots with speed hooks um, is somewhat satisfying <laughs> because of the act of hooking them up quickly um, at the top of the shaft area. Um, they feel extremely comfortable. Now, I've forgotten how many pairs of Parker's boots I have. I think it's uh, getting close to 11 or 12. And I have them in a variety of their 18 last, their 602 last, and their 602M last. In fact, I think this might be my fourth uh, boot in the 602M from the Spanish factory. So putting them on is a very familiar feeling. Uh, they feel like other Parkhurst boots. The uh, Horween Dublin leather has a fairly firm temper. So when I'm flexing my feet, I'm getting a bit of heel lift. Uh, but I think that's because the leather itself is still fairly firm, as is the Benz uh, leather midsole. As that breaks in, in like my other Parkhurst boots, the heel slip almost disappears. I'm also wearing dress socks with these, and they don't fill the boot out as much as it should if I'm wearing proper boot socks. Um, the feel of the 602M last in this leather is roomy. Uh, there's no snugness other than the heel I'm feeling at the moment and the uh, sort of mid area around here. The toe box is roomy. I like that. I can uh, kind of squiggle my toes, which I like, uh, while the shaft is firmly laced up so I'm not slipping around very much. Uh, it's reasonably flexible, but as I said, there is a bit of heel slip happening, um, which I assume will go away, which I believe will go away. Uh, in terms of shock absorption, they're as good as any other Parkhurst model. The um, studded sole that's proprietary to Parkhurst in, in their Spanish factory 
I think is a slightly softer compound than uh, regular day night and so feels like it's a little bit more shock absorbing and it is definitely grippier than, than the hard rubber day night which I've slipped on on wet tiles. Um, in terms of comfort, these are very comfortable. The arch support is pretty darn good uh, as are all uh, Parkhurst models. Perhaps I wouldn't mind a little bit more of a a cut in here to give it a little bit more support but I can easily put in a uh, an orthotic arch wedge uh, to give me a little bit more support there I don't mind that so overall feel and comfort I think very good I would give this a good 8 or 9 out of 10 right let's go on and summarize so there you are. I hope you like my first impressions of the Parkhurst Allen boot in the uh, natural Dublin leather, which I've hankered after for quite a while, and I'm, I'm very glad to have got them. Uh, very sturdy boot, nice design, uh, very comfortable, and um, I'm more than happy to um, put these on and um, uh, under jeans or chinos or whatever, uh, which will work. Uh, you know what to do. If you like this video, click on like. And if you haven't subscribed, click on subscribe and you can, uh, I think somewhere, uh, there's a little circle which you can click on screen uh, to subscribe as well. Because if you subscribe, you will be reminded by YouTube when I upload a lot more uh, uh, boot reviews. Uh, so don't miss them. Until next time, you guys take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon.